Okay, now let's talk about the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of uh, the war of attrition game that we described. Well, before this, uh, we need to uh, sort of talk about the structure of the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium because otherwise, you know, uh, the, the different forms of mixed strategy Nash uh, will be require will require a different sort of calculation. So here, we are actually looking. Uh, what's called stationary uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Well, in, in what sense it is stationary? Well, at every period, player I is going to drop out and wait uh, with those probabilities. With PI probability, he's going to drop out. With 1 minus PI probability, he's going to keep waiting. Right, or keep fighting. And this PI is going to be independent of the period. So whether it's period zero or period 10 or period 100 or 1000, they will be uh, dropping out with those probabilities. All right, P1 for player one, P2 for player two. All right, so under those stationary mixed strategy in Ash equilibrium, I'm going to calculate things for player one's perspective, but because the game is symmetric, I will just uh, copy it down and change the ones with twos and get the strategy for player two. So player one's expected utility when, <clears throat> sorry, so I'm gonna call them sigma one, sigma two star, all right? Which are basically, you know, P2, P2, oops, one minus P2 star, and then P1, one minus P1 star, all right? So that's what a strategy profile is, the probability of dropping out and staying, waiting. So what is probability for expected utility, I'm sorry, of player one, uh, given that his opponents play according to sigma two star, okay? I don't know that yet, sigma two star, but I know that it is P2, one minus P2. Well, what is the expected, so in the, uh, well, the way we find mixed strategy in Ash equilibrium is remember you have to be indifferent between these two actions, drop and wait. When you drop, I know the payoff because the game will be over, but when you wait, the game is not over yet. So therefore, expected utility of waiting may, makes no sense. So therefore, it is in fact equivalent to saying uh, you're indifferent between dropping and waiting or you're indifferent between dropping today and waiting today and dropping tomorrow. You see what I mean? So therefore, what I'm going to calculate is expected utility of player one if he drops in period T, all right, versus his expected utility if he drops at T plus one. All right, very good. Well, obviously here, uh, all those payoffs are going to, I mean, this payoff and this payoff are going to be the same if player two happened to be dropping in some period earlier than T, right? I mean, because the game will be over. So assuming that the game is not yet over, right? I mean, we do not make any payoff calculations for um, uh, terminal histories. We should be working on non-terminal histories. So what does that mean? That means the game has not yet ended before time t, so therefore I am looking some history which is in fact non-terminal, and so the game is continuing, and then player one is going to drop out at that period, or he's gonna wait and drop out next period. All right. So what are those expected payoffs? Well, if you drop in period T, well, you are actually not going to be the winner. You're going to lose, and so you're going to suffer the cost, as simple as this. So this is L1, nothing but L1T, right? This is uh, what we calculated here. All right, what about I wait in period T and then drop out? Hmm, well, okay, so here's the thing. If I wait in period T, the game may actually end in period T, right? Because my opponent is going to drop with probability P2 and wait with probability one minus uh, P, P2. So therefore with P2 probability, he may actually drop 
at period T why, uh, while I, 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 I was waiting. So if he drops in period T, the game will be over, all right? And in this case, this is the payoff I'm gonna get, H1T, right? And then with one minus P2 probability, uh, my opponent will also wait in period T. So I waited, he waited. So what happens in period T plus one, I'm dropping. Well, given that I'm dropping this period, it really is irrelevant whether my opponent is dropping in that period in period T plus one or not, because I am going to lose anyway. Remember, if both players drop at the same time, both lose. So therefore, given that I drop, it doesn't matter what my opponent does. So for that reason, if my opponent waits in period T, in period T plus one, I am dropping and hence getting L1 T plus one. Remember, I waited one more period to drop. So therefore I accumulated a, a little bit more cost. So that's it. If you're looking for mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, this payoff and this payoff must be the same. So the equivalence basically means uh, <clears throat> dropping out at time T must give the player one exactly the same payoff as waiting uh, in period T and then dropping in period T plus one. All right, so all we have to do is basically solve this equality. Well, here, uh, let's open up H1T. Remember, H1T is nothing but uh, P2 multiplied by uh, L1T plus delta T VI. And so don't forget the PI multiplied by delta T V1 plus one minus P2. Well, what is L1T plus one? So if you remember L1T is equal to uh, this finite sum up to T minus one. So therefore LIT plus one is going to be uh, L1T itself uh, minus, I'm sorry, we have extra cost, uh, delta to the power T uh, CI, okay? So <clears throat> equals to L1T. All right, well, again, uh, let's sort of open up this one minus P2. Oh, well, we don't have to. So what I do have is P2 times L1T plus P one minus P2 times L1T. So if I add them up, I'll just L1T. That will cancel out the one on the left hand side. So these guys are just gone. Well, what do I have? I have zero on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I have P2 delta to the power T V1 plus. Okay, so what I have is I wanna leave everything with P2 on the right hand side and basically send everything else to the left hand side and then solve P2 because this is what I wanna do. I wanna find the equilibrium P1 and P2 values. So. I'm gonna have uh, minus delta to the power T CI, so I send it to this side as positive, delta to the power T C1, I'm sorry, by the way, this is C1. And on the right hand side, I'm gonna have uh, minus times minus is plus P2 delta to the power T C1. So, well, one thing, delta to the power T's will cancel out on both sides, so I have no delta whatsoever. And when I take this into P2 parentheses and divide both sides by C1 plus V1, what I will find is P2 is equal to C1 divided by uh, V1 plus C1, that's it. So I can now put star here because this is the equilibrium strategy of player two. Well, it may sort of look weird because this is the strategy of player two, but it has nothing to do with player two's parameters like V2, C2, etc. Well, that's perfectly normal because don't forget the idea of mixed strategy equilibrium. A mixed strategy is a probability distribution over your actions that make your opponent indifferent. All right, so therefore making your opponent indifferent means your opponent's payoff relevant parameters will kick into uh, the calculation. So therefore the strategy of player two actually depends on what player one's uh, payoff parameters are. Or, or, I mean, you see what I mean. So, well, symmetrically, obviously, I, I don't need to calculate the entire thing once again for player 
uh, one, uh, two's perspective. This is player one's perspective. And so we calculate P2, uh, but I can just change the ones with two and uh, I will get uh, player two's, uh, I'm sorry, player one's mixed strategy equilibrium. So P1 star, P2 star basically gives me the stationary mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of this game. That's it. Uh, let's make some observations. Well, first of all, uh, assuming that C2 is very, very small, all right, both P1 star and P2 star are going to be very close to zero. That means in equilibrium, players are going to drop each period with a very small probability and with a very large probability, almost close to one, they will actually keep waiting or keep fighting. So in a sense, with a very big probability, uh, uh, this game will actually continue for a very long period of time. Well, what is the likelihood that this game is going to continue forever? Well, this probability will approach to zero, obviously, because forever means like you multiply each of those one minus P1, PIs, uh, because they're independent uh, sort of events, you multiply one minus PI times one minus PI times one minus PI, so infinitely many times. So eventually, uh, for, for a large enough period, this probability will converge to zero. But the thing is, with a very big probability, this game will actually continue for a very long time. Uh, well, but, but the cost is going to be get, you know, uh, accumulated and so you know once the game is over it's a very uh, likely that these guys are actually going to suffer uh, a negative payoff but the question is what is the expected payoff of playing those strategies i mean before these guys start playing this game how much payoff do they expect well i think that's simple because uh remember each player is indifferent between dropping out at time t and waiting and dropping out a, a, a period later. So therefore, and this t has nothing to do in our calculations, as you see, because we're looking at stationary mixed strategy equilibrium. So player one's expected payoff is basically, uh, you know, combination of these two payoffs. I mean, player one's expected payoff is combination of these two payoffs. But the thing is, it doesn't matter because those two payoffs are going to be equivalent. Right? They're going to give us the same thing. So the question is, the uh, not the question, I'm sorry, the expected payoff of player one is equal to his payoff of dropping immediately at time t equals zero. You see what I mean? So let me write this as this. So the expected... Uh, payoff of player i is equal to uh, l i t equals zero. Okay. Once again, the reasoning is that at every period, the players are indifferent between uh, dropping now or not dropping. Uh, but this is true for any t, and so therefore it's also true for t equals zero. And so I am mixing between dropping now and not dropping. Uh, given my opponent's you know, mixture, I should just multiply those numbers with the, my opponent's uh, 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 strategies and then calculate the expected payoff. But I don't really need to do that because this number and this number are equivalent. And so whatever my opponent's strategy is, it's going to be probability times this plus probability times that. And nevertheless, it's just, uh, you know, because these two numbers are the same, it's just equal to one of them. So therefore, what is the payoff of dropping out immediately? Well, it's zero, right? So therefore, both player one and player two, if they play one of those mixed strategies, they both are going to get zero. So in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, the outcome is zero, zero, in expected terms, obviously. What about the pure strategies? In the pure strategy version of the equilibrium, uh, one player is going to get zero, right? Uh, for example, here, player one drops out, and so he gets zero. The other player, however, gets V2. Um, th this one, uh, player two drops out, the symmetric. Player two gets zero payoff, player one gets V1 payoff. So when you look at or compare, uh, this is the, the, the third uh, or the second mixed strategy, uh, pure strategy, Nash equilibrium, sorry. When you compare this zero, zero, clearly it's inefficient, right? Because 
it is possible that one of the players are going to make positive payoff. Um, and so here, actually nobody makes positive payoff. But um, nevertheless, uh, this mix strategy has very appealing and nice properties like it is, for example, evolutionary stable uh, equilibrium, which we haven't defined yet and I don't think we are going to cover it in this course. Um, but, but if you think of uh, situations like war of attrition in real life, actually uh, playing a mixed strategy or the outcome of a mixed strategy makes a lot of sense. Well, why is that so? Well, because this is kind of a coordination problem as well.